Hey guys, it's Mrs. Willoughby. I'm bringing you the last math instructional video for this school year. So hopefully you found them helpful and we'll just jump right into today's work with volume and mass. So um, I'm gonna move my head up a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's look at our learning target for today. So our learning target is I can determine the best unit to measure liquid volumes and masses using grams, kilograms, and liters. So basically we're gonna look at something and think, hmm, what tool should I use to measure how much liquid or how much weight is within something? And we'll talk a little bit more about what all that means too. First, let's talk about volume. So volume is the amount of space something takes up. We think a lot about when we talk about volume, like 3D objects of how much space they take up. And um, today we're going to shift our thinking just a little bit and we're going to think about it as volume, meaning um, just it describes how much liquid a container can hold. So keeping that in mind, um, there's two different systems that we'll talk about today, both with volume and mass, and that's going to be the U.S. measurement system and the metric system. Um, U.S. system is used strictly in the United States. It's not really used anywhere else around the world. And the metric system is used everywhere else. And it's even used in the United States too, um, usually in like the medical field or um, in the scientific field they, when they want really accurate measurements. So let's take a look first with volume in regards to the U.S. Me the US measurement system. So our, um, we have four different units of measure that we'll look at um, with the U.S. measurement system for today, and that's going to be cup, pint, quart, and gallon. So cup is the smallest, and then it goes bigger, 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 all the way up to gallon. Um, you'll see that there are letters inside of parentheses. That's the abbreviated version of that. So if you see just the letter C, that's for cup. PT is for pint, QT is for quart, and GAL is for gallon. Um, this is kind of hard for me to think of if I just give numbers, and so I have some visuals for you that can help you understand about how much that might be. And these pictures are gonna be um, really handy for you as you're thinking through the problems that we do together during this video and during the Kahoot that I'll share at the end. So a cup is the same amount of liquid as what fits inside a um, milk carton that you would get at lunch in the cafeteria. That's really helpful to me. So about that big, not a ton of liquid, but a pretty good amount. Um, a pint, um, which is also equal to two cups, is going to be, I think of the little Ben and Jerry's ice creams that you can get at the store. Those are super delicious and I end up usually eating the whole thing by myself. Um, but that's a pint. Then a quart, um, a quart is equal to two pints. But that one for a visual, I like to think about um, an orange juice container like this one here um, that comes in like the cardboard container. And then finally a gallon, which is the same as four quarts, um, would be like a milk, a gallon of milk. So that one's an easy one to remember. So keeping these in mind, again, our goal is to be looking at something and think, hmm, which one of these should I use to measure how much is how much liquid is in there? So let's get some practice with that. We're gonna see a picture and I want you to decide what would be the best unit to measure and you're gonna choose the best measurement. I'll give you some choices. So thinking about this one, I see that there's a bowl and there is some yogurt, which is um, kind of liquidy, kind of not, but that's we'll still think about how much um, it would hold. So would that be about one cup or one quart? So anytime when I'm giving an example today or we're doing some practice, feel free to pause um, and use as much think time as you need. I'm gonna go kind of quickly just to keep my video short, but I know that you can pause as long as you need and play whenever you're ready. So my thinking for this is um, that it's gotta be a cup. I'm thinking in my head, if a cup is about the same amount as what's inside a milk carton at lunch, then that matches what might be in that bowl. A quart was how much is in an orange juice container and that would be way too much for a bowl of yogurt. Let's look at one more example for this. So if I'm thinking about a watering can, would it be two pints that would go inside or two quarts that would go inside? So my thinking is that it would be two quarts. Two pints would be that um, the Ben and Jerry's ice cream and that's not very much liquid for a big watering can. And so I'm thinking about, hmm, about two 
containers of that Minute Maid juice, that would fill a, a typical watering can. So it would be more likely the best estimate would be two quarts. You'll get more practice again doing this throughout and then also in a Kahoot that I'll share with you at the end. Let's look at the metric system for measuring volume. So we're going to look at milliliters, which are actually really small amounts of liquid. So a milliliter, if you think about like a little droplet that just does little tiny drops of water, um, or if you look at, if you've ever been sick and had to take some liquid medicine and they have those little tiny cups with all those little lines on those, those hold about 30 milliliters depending on your cup. Um, but if it can hold 30 milliliters and it's just like that much liquid, you know that milliliters are really small. So that's kind of the visual I think of is that little medicine cup for milliliters. And then we're also gonna look at liters. So just to get an idea, 1,000 milliliters is the same as one liter. So that's a lot of milliliters going into a liter. I also think about they have the containers of soda or this one's a picture of a tea that's a liter. It's not quite those big giant two liter ones, like, oops, like this, but it's also not one of those little individual ones that you get as well. It's that one that's kind of in between that's bigger than your typical like water bottle or um, bottle of soda, but it's not the two liter one. So that kind of gives you another idea of about how much a liter might be. So keeping those in mind, let's do a couple of examples of what measurement would be best in the metric system. So again, I'm gonna give you a picture. What would be the best unit to measure? You're gonna choose the best estimate. So let's look like a glass of liquid. I think it's a glass of milk here. Would it be better to say that that's about 250 milliliters or two liters? So if you think there, I'm gonna say 250 milliliters. If I'm thinking about a two liter, of Coke, like I had in the picture before, that's way more than a glass of liquid. I know that I can get several glasses of Coke out of a two liter. And so 250 milliliters would probably be about right. Let's look at another one. Think about a big fish tank. Would that be 40 milliliters or 40 liters? So again, if I'm thinking through this one, if a milliliter is little, little, bit, and I know that one of those little medicine containers is about 30 milliliters, that means it'd only be just a little bit more than that. That's not very much liquid, and those poor fish would not do well with that much liquid. So 40 liters, if I think about, hmm, that'd be like 22 liters of soda. That would make sense. That would be a lot of liquid, and it would fill a big container. So I would say that it would be 40 liters. So now that we've looked at volume, we're going to look at mass. Mass is the amount of matter that makes up an object. And that's kind of a complicated way um, to say that today we're going to describe how much something weighs. When we're thinking about mass, we're really just going to kind of think about how much it weighs. So again, we're going to look at the U.S. measurement system and the metric system. So in the U.S. measurement system, today we're going to focus on three different units of measure. Ounces, pounds, and tons. Again, ounces is the smallest. Pounds is the next biggest, and tons would be the biggest that we're looking at today. So your visuals for those, an ounce, if I think about, about how much a piece of bread weighs, that's about an ounce. Then 16 ounces would be the same as one pound. So that's about, if I think about an entire loaf of bread that's just been baked and hasn't been cut up yet, that'd be about a pound. Then finally, a ton. That's 2,000 pounds put together would equal a ton. And a ton is about how much a small car weighs. So that's really, really heavy. If you've already watched our video on figurative language, then you'll know that we have a figure of speech that's that it weighed a ton. And usually we're not talking about an actual ton where it weighs as much as a car. We're just saying it's really heavy. Um, but an actual car does weigh, weigh a ton. <laughs> So let's get some practice thinking about hmm, which one of these would best fit when I'm thinking about the weight of something. So we're going to have a picture. What would be the best unit to measure how much it weighs or the mass? So think about a banana. Would that be six ounces or six pounds? So when I'm thinking, I know that a banana is not very heavy. I can lift it with one hand. 
an ounce is about the weight of a slice of bread. So six slices of bread, I could pick up that pretty easy. Six pounds, getting a little heavy. Um, so I'd say that it would definitely be six ounces since a banana doesn't weigh very much by itself. Let's do another example. Think about a refrigerator. 300 pounds or 300 tons? Which one would you choose? So again, if I think about this, 300 tons, that would mean three the same weight as 300 cars if a car weighs about a ton. A refrigerator does not weigh 300 cars worth. So 300 pounds, that would make more sense. 300 loaves of bread, it's pretty heavy, but it's not that crazy heavy, like 300 tons. So it would be 300 pounds. Finally, let's look at the metric system. So within the metric system for mass, what we're gonna focus on today is grams and kilograms. And um, there's more in between, but those are just the two that we're gonna focus on today. So a gram, kind of like a milliliter, is very small. A gram weighs about the same as a paperclip. So that's not very much at all. And then 1,000 grams is the same as a kilogram. And a kilogram would be about how much like a pineapple would weigh. Or if you think about like a bigger dictionary that is like a hardcover big dictionary, it would be about a kilogram. So keep those in mind. And let's do a couple of practices again, looking at, hmm, which unit would be better to measure how much that weighs, how much mass it has. So find what would be the best unit to measure. If I think about a football, four grams or 400 grams? Hmm. So thinking about one gram is the same as a paperclip. A football probably weighs more than four paperclips because that's still not very much. 400 sounds like a lot, but 400 paperclips really wouldn't weigh that much at all. So 400 grams makes more sense. Then think about um, a TV. Would that be 15 grams or 15 kilograms? Hmm. So think again, 15 grams would be like 15 paper clips. That's not very much at all. 15 kilograms would be like 15 pineapples, which would be kind of heavy, um, kind of like what a TV would be. So I would say a TV would need to be 15 kilograms. So your challenge today then is to do a Kahoot challenge. So if you check out this week's menu, um, there is an at-home Kahoot challenge with volume and mass. So I'm gonna show you it really quickly. Um, okay, so if you go into the link, it should come up with something that looks like this. Um, you'll have your volume and mass estimates Kahoot. You're going to look at the bottom. It's gonna say join the game. So you can put in your name or a nickname and press OK Go. Then this is going to be a little bit different. You don't have to wait for anybody else um, to play. You can just play at your own pace whenever you'd like. And then once more people play, you can compare your score with others that have played. So it won't, um, you won't have to wait for everybody else in the class or to have a code. This is all you'll have to do is follow the link whenever you're ready. So I'll press OK Go. And then it's going to give me the questions. Oh, I forgot you'll have to, oh, there it goes. Um, so it'll give you the questions, um, just like you would have normally. It'll look like what's on my screen, and you'll click which one you think. So it's gonna give you a picture. If I had a little pan or a pot like that, which one would be better, three pints or three gallons? So I'm gonna make my choice. It'll give me that feedback right away and tell me how many points I might have gotten. Then when I'm ready to move on, I'll press next. It'll give me the scoreboard of who has played. I tested it out on my own earlier, um, but it'll tell you how you've ranked with other people that have played before. Um, and then I have to move myself over, but there's this nice little next button that's right there that you can press when you're ready to move on to the next one. So I'll do another one. I won't go through the whole thing. Um, so choose the best estimate. Hopefully this one's easy for you because I gave this as an example in my video, but would it be one cup or one pint? So I'll select mine. It'll tell me if I got it right or wrong. It'll give me my points. I'll press next when I'm ready. 
So this part will look really similar. You'll just have to be the one that presses the next button. So you'll get to kind of be in charge uh, like I would do on my computer for when we play Kahoot. And then it'll give you at the end how you ranked and what your score was all, um, all throughout. So hopefully that's fun for you and you get the hang of it and get some good practice in. I miss you. I hope you're safe. Have a great summer and I'll see you next school year.